Hi everybody, I am Husky Light. Um, I have ummed and ahed about making this video for the past two weeks. I wasn't sure about it. I wasn't sure whether I was going to make it and tell you what had happened to me. Um, but I figured you're awake enough. You've been through enough woo with me. We might as well just woo it out a little bit more. So I'll go for it. Um, some of you may remember, I will put a link to the video actually. I go through it, I mean, I see all my numbers all the time. I go through it and I repeat things a lot of times as well where I will see something and then it's repeated later on in in the day. Uh, my battery ran out on my car a few days ago um, and then the very and once I got it fixed and got it home, then the very next day, one of my neighbours across the road, I saw them with jump leads because their battery had gone on their car as well. So little things like that will happen to me you know, several times in a day or a couple of times a day where I repeat things. My little girl knocks her glass of water over and then not long after I'll knock my glass of water over. And it's just little things that just, I, I seem to see things or hear things and then it repeats. So those are my synchronicities along with the, the numbers and everything. They're very random. But I will also get synchronicities which are very, very meaningful as in they are preparing me for something or trying to warn me of something that's going to happen of significance and this is exactly what they did a couple of weeks ago um, and they've done it before and one example of that I'll put the link up, up for it was a cat um, that got run over which I was warned about the night before it actually happened and I actually saw it happen but I was in the right place at the right time to be able to help the cat um, and get it to a vet and then later on that same afternoon I was very wary of how I was driving because of what had happened it wasn't me that ran the cat over by the way so I watched somebody else run the cat over but because of that experience I was very wary of driving and driving very slowly when I was out and about and later on in the day because of me driving slower it probably saved me from running a child over because a very small child ran right out in front of the road in front of me. Now that could have been me repeating, having another synchronistic moment. I saw the cat run over, you know, and maybe I was repeating it like I do with a gla the glass of water or whatever is going on. But I actually think that actually happened for a reason. I actually think that I was made to slow down and think more about my driving or there could have been, good touch word, it didn't happen, you know, it could have been a lot more serious. I was, because I was driving so slowly, I was very quickly able to stop the car and, and sort the child out, save the child and get the child off the road. So, similar sort of thing where I'd been pretty much, it had been orchestra, or, or, orchestrated, like an orchestrated occurrence, orchestrated meeting, that was warning me of something to come. So, bear with me. I'll try and get this into order. Um, so, I, I have a neighbour who, who, bless her, she doesn't understand Twin Flames. So she doesn't understand why I'm on my own. Uh, she doesn't understand why I'm not particularly bothered about going out and trying to, to be in a relationship with anybody else. Um, and she's been, she's been trying to match make and part she's and bless her she thinks she's doing the right thing and I'm like stop it <laughs> just stop it oh but anyway she but again this was divinely orchestrated this was meant to happen guides angels my contacts my hires you know whatever it was sort of bringing ideas and messages through her in order to orchestrate something to happen. That I needed to to see and be aware of. So she, she tells me, "Oh, I know this great guy on Facebook, and and I've known him for years, and all the rest of it." And I'm like, "Yeah, right, whatever." And um, she ends up sending. I'm not on Facebook. She ends up sending him a message on Facebook, and and she'd said, "He's into all this conspiracy stuff, like you are. He's into all this and aliens and and all the rest of us." Like, right, okay. So. She sends him a message and he sends her a message back saying, I could really do in with, with speaking to Daniela, I really need some help. I'm having some paranormal stuff happen to me and um, I think it's ET related. I was like, whoa, okay then. 
Danny to the rescue. Let's get in there. So I sent him an email and said, look, I, I believe you're having some some um, problems, <laughs> problems or things that you're not quite understanding that you may need some help with. So here's me ghost busting to the rescue. Um, do you want to tell me about it? And, you know, I'll help you. If I can help you, I'll explain, you know, hopefully what's going on with you. So he emailed me back, um, left me his number and I, I gave him a ring and he said, we shouldn't really be speaking on the phone. We should, you know, I said, I totally agree with you. If you don't, you know, I'll meet up with you. Uh, and the guy only lives like two or three miles away from me. So I met up with him, um, had a coffee with him and he told me he's gone through the awakening process he's gone through a kundalini awakening very similar to to mine um he's about maybe a year behind me or something but he's gone through very similar things gone through similar experiences and he's telling me some of his experiences and he's, he's sort of trying to get into meditation and he's trying to calm the energies around him down and i'm giving him hints and tips to help him because obviously when you go through it First of all, if it's quick, if it's fast, it, it, it can be scary and there's other things involved and you, you're not just seeing guides and angels, you can see other things as well and other occurrences, can, supernatural occurrences can happen as well. And you have to learn to ground yourself, you have to learn to protect yourself, to be psychically aware, to be able to discern as well. And um, so I was giving him all these hints and tips and he... The thing is, if you wake up very, very quickly, if you're a twin flame, it doesn't actually matter, you don't have to be a twin flame. If you are, each and every one of you that wakes up is here for a reason. You're here on a mission. You, A lot of us believe that, you know, we are starting to see the matrix fall down around us. We are starting this part of the 1111 phenomenon. And seeing the 1111s, it's because we're sort of finally starting to see through the veil, the illusion and the matrix that we are used to, which we are surrounded by, which is our everyday reality, is starting to glitch. It's starting to break down. And we're starting to see things through the veil. We're starting to see that there is something behind that wall. There's something behind there. And there are other possibilities, there are endless possibilities, there are other dimensions, there are other parallels, there are other times. And we become cosmically aware, you, we become a, aware of our guides and angels, we become aware um, that we are, in con some of us are in contact, like myself, are in contact with uh, benevolent um, ET races and things like that. So, I'm sort of explaining all of this to him and, you know, we're agreeing on a lot of it. But as I said, as you're waking up, sometimes it you, you're confused. You don't know what's going on. You don't know why it's happening to you. You don't understand some of the things that you are seeing. And um, we were having a conversation. He was telling me about an experience that he'd had where um, um, a black Porsche uh, had tried to run him down not long after he'd awakened. And he had another experience where... There was a couple of black German cars following him around and usually what happens when you wake up it's like the the darker powers that be know that you're trying to wake up and know that you are going through an awakening and sometimes they will come in and try and scare you or they will come in and say no 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 you've got to go back to sleep you don't need to be awake you don't want to see what's really going on in this world and you will get a little bit of like hyperdimensional interference coupled in with the awakening that you're going through. So not only are you getting all the good stuff, but you will also get this interference of, and it could be, it could be a little bit of black magicians. It could be Illuminati. It can be the, you know, the darker side of things. It can be uh, malevolent ETs and they will come in and say oh there's one awake there quick get them down <laughs> bring them down and and try and scare you a little bit and try and put you in a position where you just you don't want to speak out you don't want to talk about your experiences you don't want to carry through with your mission and help to awaken others 
who are going through the awakening process because this is what I think we're all here to do in one way or another, each in our own way. So they will step in and try it and they they tried it with me quite a lot at the beginning and there were times when they nearly succeeded but when I realised what was going on and when I learned and as I ascended and began to learn and study and, and realise more and more and get messages from my own guides and angels and, and, and the good ETs, I realised that these things are just naturally coming in to try and stop me. Um, which point, when you realise what something is, when you can turn the light on it and recognise it, it's not scary anymore. So when things start to happen, it's just like, yeah, whatever, stop it. This is ridiculous. This is not going to happen. You're not going to bring me down. I've now risen above that scaremongering. Uh, I, we've we've ascended to a point where you know, you know, you've gone through your fourth dimensional creatures and seeing things, and you've risen above it. So he's telling me about these black cars, and he's telling me about you know getting stalked by them or nearly getting run over with them. So that was quite prevalent within the conversation. But he said that the black cars sort of followed him round, but they weren't hurting him, they weren't doing anything. It's like they were keeping an eye on him and he couldn't understand what they were, just that they were black cars with German number plates. Anyway, so we, we finished our conversation and there was obviously a lot more within that conversation, which I won't go into. Um, and that was on, I'll tell you what date that was on. I want to know if anyone else was having because there was a lot it was there was a lot of high strangeness that weekend I think I did a high strangeness sort of video and and when I did that high strangeness video I was sort of I had this in the back of my head, head as well um so that was on Friday the 7th of July uh it was only a couple of weeks ago it wasn't that long ago um anyway on Sunday the 9th of July my little girl was away <clears throat> and I decided I took my son uh, and, and little and the little doggy little puppy we all went to the we went to the beach for the day we had a lovely day we went out to the beach had a good walk all the rest of it on the way home I was determined to to eat chips sorry from the chip shop um, and there was this particular chip shop in um, a place called Thirsk in North Yorkshire which makes onion gravy so I was determined even though it was like over half an hour out of our way home I was determined to drive there because it was sort of on the way I was determined to drive there and get some of these chips with this onion gravy so we arrived there and I park in a, it's a little cobbled car park near right in the in this in the square sort of a village square I go to the bottom of the car, open the boot of my car, fill up a water bowl for doggy. As I'm putting that on the floor so for the dog to have a drink, as I look up, there's a, a black car who was pulled into the car park who comes past me very slowly. And there's a woman, probably in her late 20s, early 30s, I would imagine in the car i don't know if she was driving i don't know if the steering wheel was on the opposite side of the car she was on the right hand side of the car and as she drove past and they were crawling past because they were parking um she smiled at me she stared directly at me and she smiled at me and i smiled back at her she was beautiful she was very very pretty she had extremely blonde hair she had stunning, stunning blue eyes, very high cheekbones, pale looking. You know where I'm going with this, don't you? <laughs> Before I get there. And she was beautiful looking. And I sort of, and she wasn't, she wasn't looking at the doggy. That wasn't the reason. She was just staring straight at me and smiled at me. Um, so I sort of smiled back at her. And she drove past. Um, and she drove a little sort of parked about four cars away I didn't actually see her parking but immediately behind her car was another black car and that pulled in and parked next to me and out of this car I think there was two people in each car out of this car I noticed this man stepped out this guy stepped out 
and oh my god he was drop dead gorgeous he had extremely blonde hair extremely blue eyes late 20s early 30s again really really good looking really good looking and um it didn't hit me for a few minutes to be honest i uh finished giving giving the doggy the water um closed up the boot of the car I looked at the back of these cars, or the one next to me and the, the one and the front of the other one that had parked a, a bit away, and realised they were they were both black estate Audis, and they had foreign number plates on them. They were white number plates with red lettering. I think it began with R1, one of them, um, with red lettering on it. And I said to my son, I said, where are those number plates from? And he, he looked at them and he said, oh, they're German. And it didn't hit me for a few minutes. And I went into the chip shop. And as I'm stood in the chip shop, I'm thinking... And then it went back to the conversation that I'd had on Friday with this guy. But that I was literally in the chip shop five minutes. When I'd come out of the chip shop, those cars had disappeared. They'd gone. And I was like, oh, oh my God. Those... I firmly believe because I've looked this up and, and tried to make sense of it since, um, I firmly believe that they were not because of their appearance, because of their appearance, even though they looked extremely, extremely human, they were not, they were either tall whites or Nordics, maybe Palladians, but I think Palladians have white hair. They were definitely tall whites or Nordics and they smiled at me for a reason and I also was told it was all because that meeting was complete that you know that meeting they worked through that guy to bring me that message to tell me be aware this is going to happen on Sunday be aware notice us when we turn up because had he not told me that on Friday I probably would, I would not really have taken a lot of notice. I just would have smiled at her and carried on. Simply the fact that they warned me and told me, you need to take notice of this when we come and you need to, to acknowledge it, that it's important, that I did. And I, I looked it up and realised that that is probably what they were. They were tall whites or Nordics who... And to me, there was no fear there. There's no nothing there. The smile she gave me was extremely reassuring. They were there for a reason. They were showing themselves to me for a reason. I don't particularly know what that reason is right now, but they were doing it for a reason. And I think it was to reassure me. And to be honest, I've sat here past couple of weeks and, and looked at things and I thought, shall I say anything? And I thought, yeah, I will in the end because not only do I sort of blog these experiences for myself for my own record of what's going on in my life but also I think in this instance as well it was a re they were a reassurance to me and I think it by telling you this, this should be a reassurance to you as well that there is definitely not all bad there that there are actually they are here on earth with us walking among us amongst us and they are helping us and they are benevolent and there is an air of reassurance and I think that is the message they wanted to give to me by smiling at me and being there and warning me to acknowledge it that they would be there and for me to pass that on to you as well that for all the bad that goes on in this world for all the scary stuff that we do see there are some very, very benevolent ET races which are here for the good of humanity that are here helping us as well. As far as I know, the Nordics or the Tall Whites, whatever we want to call them, they could have been Palladians as well. I'm not 100%. I've never seen one of these before. <laughs> um, they're here to help. As far as I know, they may have something to do with the Secret Space Program and they are helping humanity 
uh, they may be helping certain factions of the government or or something in a, in a good way because for all we don't like <laughs> we don't like the government we don't like what's going on in there but there are good people within the government just as there are good people within the police force within the CIA within um, all these different alphabet factions and a lot of them are being influenced and ruled by a darker section a more uh, malevolent section of extraterrestrials somebody you know things from another planet people from another planet ets from another planet that is holding holding us down and keeping us sort of in this this matrix in this planet or trying to keep us under control but there are also other factions there the secret space program etc who are trying to help and i honestly think they just wanted me to be reassured that things are, that we're on the right path that we're on this we are awakening for a reason we are here to help others we are on the right path and we are heading towards, even though sometimes it doesn't look like it, we are heading towards peace and harmony at some point in our future. Hopefully we'll all still be alive to actually see that happen. Um, but I think this, when we talk about disclosure, um, we want them to land on the White House lawn and the governments are going to come out and they're all going to come out and say they're not going to tell us. It's not going to come out like that. As far as I know, they want to take 50 to 100 years or something to actually come out and give disclosure fully. And they'll do it in tiny little drips and drabs. I think in the meantime, though, disclosure is coming from us, from individuals, going through the awakening, becoming aware of things, and it's on an individual basic basis. They are showing themselves to us on an individual basis, and we're all having different experiences but they are positive and the fact that they showed themselves to me physically as in they were physically there um my son saw them as well although he won't understand or get who they were and the significance of that to me they're good and i think it was a very positive um and and I say thank you to them so, so much. I think it was a very, very positive thing. Um, but again, that coincidence, which was not a coincidence, that divine orchestrated synchronicity that happened, that was told, they worked through somebody else to tell me, to come to me, to warn me, to tell me, to be aware of that on the Sunday so that I would notice and acknowledge it. And even right from the beginning, going through my friend who has the thought to start with, oh, you need to speak to this person. For all of that, it's all very orchest... Some things in life, when you start to realise and see things, are very orchestrated and happen for a very specific reason. Now, I don't know the full reason as to why it happened, why they did, but all I can say at this moment is just, just to be very, very positive and reassured that we're not alone. We're definitely not alone, and there are other factions out there that are helping us. So I thought I'd share this with you and sort of blog it myself for my own um, information on things, but I think... I think it was brilliant. So there's your bit of woo. <laughs> if anyone um, has got more information, I know that I, this is the Secret Space Program and I know little bits about it. I know about Corey Good and David Wilcock and things like that. I know that they're from, I have a knowing that they're probably from that, that sort of thing. Um, and I know that they've been here for a long, 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 long time. Um, yeah I'm not going to go any further because I'm not I'm not mindful enough to know exactly um, what their purpose is here but I just know that they are very positive and, and they're, they're working alongside certain factions to help 
to clear up this planet and to help move this planet and help it and guide it through ascension and this is for their own benefit as well obviously but uh, that's what it's there for so namaste um let me know comments <laughs> opening myself up to a whole can of worms here um but if anyone has had any experiences like that or has any information um that might help in this i know that it was positive i know that they were being there and they were being very reassuring to me um and that's all i can say at this point but i think they wanted me to to reassure you as well that's a good point to do so i'm doing i'm doing my bit so namaste take care and i will speak to you soon all right bye